Track Clinics here at College of Lake County. Uh, it's great to see such a large group here tonight. We're as we gather here to celebrate our seasons and, uh, and our accolades and academics and, and all of our achievements so far this year. And, and of course, our Hall of Fame induction as well. Uh, to start the evening, I'd like to invite you all to stand as we play the national anthem on our way. Festivities, we are fortunate to have our president with us this evening to celebrate our year. She's a big advocate for our student athletes and our program, and I know she's excited for the opportunity to, to say a couple words to our students, family, and friends. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the president of College of Lake County, Dr. Lori Sutton. I would like to express my appreciation 
to the next commander, the athletics director, and all of his staff for their dedication to ensuring all of your programming runs smoothly throughout the year. And I would also like to say my appreciation and thank you to all of the coaches for their time and commitment to you, student athletes. But tonight, we are going to celebrate you. Congratulations to all of you for your individual and team achievements that we will celebrate this evening. We are very proud of you, and we look forward to seeing your future successes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shelley, for the kind words. Uh, I think the sport you've shown the first year on campus has been off the charts and certainly doesn't go unnoticed by our student athletes, coaches, and staff. Thank you. What I'd like to do next is introduce our stage party up here. Uh, starting to pile up, over to my right, we've got John Bonjourno, our head women's basketball coach, Devin Talbot, head of our women's soccer coach. Dr. Jim Love, our head of men's and women's tennis coach. He wins. He wins. Jorge Lee, our head of men's women's cross country coach. Here in Latin, our vice president of student development. We already know about her. Uh, I'm Dr. Sutton. Then we got Lynn Powell, Board of Trustees member. Pete Cummings, head baseball coach, and our two man state high school representative. We got Bill and Janet Sidniak, our volleyball coaches. Yes, they are the members. I'd also like to honor our assistant coaches uh, sitting out here. If you all can stand up real quick to introduce you. Thank you for mentioning our tennis assistant coach, Ms. Jones. Tom Peters, baseball. Chris Peters. Baseball. Uh, Staff, both head coaches and assistant coaches. And just putting some quick thoughts together earlier, I'm estimating we have over 200 years of coaching experience on our staff, which is uh, fantastic. So we really appreciate all your hard work and dedication for our students. Special thank you goes to our Board of Trustees uh, for supporting athletics as part of the college um, and as a direct report towards our mission. To our college leadership team for their government support by athletics over the years. Uh, to the facilities department for helping set up these tables and, and make this event happen and then everything they do for us to make our athletic events happen uh, throughout the year. Special thank you goes to our grounds department for all the hard work they've done on our outdoor fields this year. Um, I can't thank enough our staff and athletic department. Uh, Cindy Munda, Renee Blackburn, Arnita Walker, Steve Hines, we don't see how to make what we do. Brady Stoll, our athletic trainer, who's a great player of our two families. And let's not forget the voice of the Lancers, Mr. Pank Forth. Last but not least, I want to thank our parents and our student athletes. We ask a lot of our student athletes, from the mandatory study hall to tutoring uh, to the athletic schedules. It's a big adjustment coming to college, period, but to be a student athlete in college is a whole other level. And uh, we really appreciate your, your determination, your perseverance, um, and your time and your skills and everything you've done to uh, be a student athlete here to do it with uh, class and uh, just a great approach. Thank you. Sometimes years up go by fast, and I don't really have time to sit back and reflect upon what a wonderful year you've had. Uh, 
uh, my own surprise, sitting back the last couple days, thinking about what we're going to talk about in honor tonight, uh, came up with a long list of accomplishments. Uh, to highlight a few, uh, on the screen coming up here, we had a conference title, we had two second place finishes in the conference, one NJC Region 4 championship, two NJC Region 4 runner ups, team wise. Three teams qualified for the NJC National Championship, including our men's golf team, who's there being out today, if we're not able to be here with us tonight, or glad we're not, right? Uh, one conference coach of the year, one Region 4 coach of the year, four conference players of the year, uh, which is incredible. 34 all-conference student-athletes, 26 all-region student-athletes, 52 academic all-conference honorees. And uh, one thing I'm really proud of is that we've solidified ourselves as a top three institution in our Skyway Conference All-Sports Award, finishing in third place the last two years, uh, which is an improvement from seventh place the two years prior to that. Um, so congratulations to all of our sports for contributing to elevating the Lancer Athletic Programs. In total, we have 146 individual awards and accolades to hand out this evening. I can assure you these are not merely participation awards. Rather, these are real accomplishments, big accomplishments. These are awards that you have won competing as Lancers. These are awards that you've voted on by our peers at other institutions. And lastly, and most importantly, these are awards that came from your hard work and determination and your coursework. Before we get to presenting the awards, we'd like to take some time to reflect upon our seasons. While we finish up our meals, we'll be playing a season recap video that encompasses all 12 sport programs where you'll hear from your coaches and see some highlight footage and so forth. The film was produced, edited, um, and filmed by Richard Ray, one of our student workers. Uh, he's done a fantastic, fabulous job. And uh, after the completion of the video, we'll resume our program and, and awards. Yeah, I think it went really well. The boys played hard every every game. Uh, we started out, I believe, uh, two and six in Florida on our Florida trip, and finished 25 and 20 on the year. It was, it was a fun fun team to coach, and uh, uh, I think we had a lot of freshmen out there that, that were learning uh, how to play college baseball. And I, I actually think that they did really well for being a freshman team out there. We had a few few sophomores that played uh, on, on a daily basis, but but 90 percent of our roster. Was, was fresh from base. Um, there were some, some teams in the past uh, talked it but didn't really go after it. And these guys, these young men, actually, you know, they were driven and uh, they got it done in the classroom and they, and they got it done on the field as well. So. Well, we, we actually handed out a, um, a, a hustle award belt and um, it, it, it was a, a hustle award for any athlete on the team that hustled a lot in practice, gave it all his got in practice, or was a clutch uh, player in that game or what have you. In the beginning of the year, I actually gave it out to a certain athlete. Mm -hmm. And then from that point on, each athlete that earned that belt uh, actually handed it out to, to the um, person on the team who, who they felt won that belt or earned that belt. Uh, we have 15 uh, freshmen coming back and probably 10 to 12 of those uh, freshmen helped us every day this spring. So you, you bring them back with experience and you have a, we have a really strong uh, recruiting class coming in, 17 new, new players coming in next year. And I think that uh, you mix those guys together, uh, I think we got something pretty special uh, to do next year. And I, I think we'll be in the top, you know, top four in our region. What I love most is just teaching the, the athletes the game of baseball, and not just the game of baseball, but life lessons and stuff. I think our practice structure and how we go about that uh, is, is getting them ready for the game, mentally wise. I mean, go from being at a certain level when they first get here in the fall, and and after their first year playing and coming back as sophomores, see them develop and grow, and, and, and to me, that's, that's the beauty of it. And, Seeing them move on to four-year schools, I, we've moved 70, 78 or 76 players on in the last 
eight years to four years. So to me, that, that's the most important part, seeing these young men develop into men and, and, and to um, see them grow. As far as the team overall, I, I, like I said, they're, they're, they were a bunch of guys, and I think um, for us to move forward, we're gonna, we're gonna be in pretty good shape moving on. We have 15 freshmen coming back next year, and I think that's gonna, that's gonna put us where we need to be, so. With 3-11 in the conference, uh, we started the year with uh, 18 players and finished the year with eight, and uh, it was, it was a battle all year to compete. The guys that we finished the year with, kind of the core of our team, uh, gave a, a consistently good effort. We had consistently good practices. The guys brought it to practice each day. They liked to play. Uh, they were able to compete, work hard in practice, regardless if they're disappointed in the, the night before or two nights before or whatever, they uh, they brought it to practice and uh, uh, but that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do with the length of our season. I kind of convinced a referee this year to change a call, which I, this is my 44th year in coaching. I think that's the first time I've ever experienced that. Embrace change. That's the one concept that they're gonna find in the rest of their lives. Things don't stay the way they are. They're gonna change. The people who are the most successful are not the ones who fight change, resist change, complain about change, but those who embrace it and learn how to use it to their benefit, to their advantage. The best thing that I experienced was simply the people, the, the athletes who were serious about education and serious about basketball and wanted to work. Those players were a joy and there were a lot of them. Also the people that make up this athletic department and work in this facility here, I think do a lot of great things behind the scenes. I felt like that uh, trying to do their best for the students, for the athletes, was a common theme here. I just want to thank everyone involved for their work in supporting the team and the team itself for their efforts. And I want to wish everyone success, happiness, and whatever you choose. And I hope you can look back at your time at CLC as something that helped you, that was a, a good benefit to you. And uh, once again, simply good luck to everyone. I thought the season won pretty well. When you come from a year that we only won six games last year and won 15 this year, and at one point we're ranked 20th in the country, uh, I think that this season was a success. Uh, again, for second year in a row, we had injuries that really hurt us in the second half of the season. I, I think the way we hung together, to, to be a ranked team that never happened in the history of the, of the school, and to break into the top 20 was enormous, I think, for the program. I think it'll help us going forward. The first one I remember is when we down to play Kankakee, who is one of the best teams um, in, in, the, in the area, in the country sometimes. And with four tenths of a second, uh, they called a foul on Kankakee and had a freshman, uh, Camille Cuevas, go to the line, hit two, won the, won the ball game for us. Um, you know, we've come a long way in a short period of time. Two years ago, we didn't have a program here. So to, to get 15 wins this year after winning six games last year, and, and like I said, you know, attaining that national ranking, uh, hopefully will be, you know, a, a big step forward for this program. Well, we have uh, two players who are moving on, Hannah Rapak and Shay Erickson. Shay's gonna play for a school in Indiana. 
and Hannah hopefully uh, will walk on at Marquette University. And I think the two years they spent here have prepared them for good things going forward. What I, what I love the most is that the kids that we had come in were really tight knit. And when you have a team team, you know, some people can talk about having a team, but we had a team team. People all hung together, played for each other. And I think that's been my, the, the best part of this experience. I think the one thing that I'd like to say to the players who are leading the program, <clears throat> that you really helped us going forward. Um, you were people that not only were good basketball players, but you were good people. And, and I know in Hannah Ralpock's case, an excellent student, um, Shay Erickson came from a person who I would say, um, I have a saying that she could play basketball in a tuxedo, which means she wouldn't go to the basket very much her freshman year. But she knew that was something she had to get better with, got better this, this past season. And the returning players for next year, I think uh, we have a bright future. And I want to thank them for uh, making this a great experience. Yeah, so, uh, so anytime you don't win is, um, is definitely a bummer, uh, especially when our expectation going into the season was, was to win. Um, you know, coming off a high with our women's team last year and then actually winning the, the conference title for the first time in um, 17, 18 years, it, it really kind of set the bar high for us. Ultimately, we, uh, we, we um, survived the season and um, looking forward to the next one. One of the top moments that I remember this season is um, going to be Jeremy Wallace. Uh, this guy, something else, he uh, put in the work in the offseason like he was supposed to. He was our Skyway champion, um, an individual, and uh, came runner-up at the region race. On the women's side, we had uh, we had a young lady that actually improved uh, her 5K time over six minutes um, in, in 90 days. Um, so, so truly a testament to uh, to what uh, what commitment will um, will get you. I think I think the funny story here, uh, you'll hear it in the laughter in, in, in the room from these guys, but um, just one word. Overtake! <laughs> the cross country guys and girls will definitely pick that one up and, uh, and, and chuckle a little bit about it. But I think this goes back to um, what Coach Ace shared with us at the beginning of the season. He's been sharing with us every year from um, one of his uh, one of his colleagues. But always remember the 40% rule. Uh, when your mind says you're done, it's only at 40%. Um, for for you guys, the, the future is bright for you. There's nothing that you're not going to be able to overcome. And um, I, I really look forward to, to watching you guys grow. So it's been a great opportunity for me to be uh, at, the, at the helm here for our men's and women's program. Um, I, I love being able to give back to the community that I'm a part of. Um, I love to be able to show um, the, the, the athletes that choose to come to CLC, um, but ultimately there's more to being a student than just athletics. Um, it's, it's a lot about what opportunities present themselves after here. Um, I think that's probably the most, um, most rewarding part is, is watching our athletes transfer somewhere else, do great things, whether it's on the field or off the field, it doesn't matter, they're doing great things, and then finding their purpose and being able to come back and say, you know what, it's because of something that I learned here. I just wanted to say thank you guys for allowing us the opportunity to be part of your lives and watching you grow. Um, it's, it's been surreal, and, and I know at times we, we, were, we were tough on you, but um, I think ultimately we were fair and we held you accountable uh, and, and we really do hope that um, those lessons that you've learned here, uh, the mistakes that you made here, you'll learn from and you'll grow from and, and really be um, the best that you can be uh, wherever you decide to go, wherever the road takes you. So um, for that, thank you. Appreciate it. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the future.
uh, triumphant in a single word. It, it was a great season. We met both of our big goals. Each year we have two goals to uh, win the conference championship, which we did. We were able to defend our title, which was great. And we also qualified for the national tournament as a team. This team is great in that uh, two or three of them all went to the same high school. And so they came in, you know, with, uh, with already that camaraderie and the friendship. And then they also took, you know, the freshmen coming in like under their wing um, and they all got along so great. It was really a joy to, to be able to coach them. So one thing that um, I think is worth mentioning, um, you know, previously at the at the regional tournament, the all time record that lasted decades was a 901 as a team and we shot at 899. Uh, so we actually broke that record. Uh, that is historic. You know, statistically speaking, looking at those numbers uh, on paper is the, the best team in CLC history. So what they accomplished there was was just awesome. starting to recruit some of these better players, it really gets our our name on the map. And not only defending the conference title like we did, but qualifying for nationals, I mean, that, that really puts our name out there on the national level. So I, I think we're set up well for the future. I would tell them that, that they have it, it seems like they have very bright futures. I mean, they're all really good guys. Um, they're they're good on the course, but a lot of them have showed that they're even better in the classroom, which is what we, we really want. I would tell them, don't ever lose your love uh, for the game. Once you get out of the, the competition stage, um, make sure you really, really have fun with it. But um, you know, it, it's a game for a lifetime, so keep playing golf and keep loving it. The resources that we have and the support, you know, offered through Nick, our AD, and, and all the athletic staff here is just great. I've, I've loved, you know, taking this program and turning it into a, a you know, a championship one um, and, and building these teams that can compete, you know, at a higher level. Um, so I've, I've loved it. I know Coach Gentry talks a lot with his men's soccer team uh, that there's a lot bigger things in life than soccer. And uh, he's living that right now as he and his family navigate through a family tragedy. And uh, so we certainly respect uh, the family's privacy and, and everything else. And uh, we share our regrets and condolences with him as him and his family uh, navigate through some tough times. So I know he wanted me to send his regrets for not being able to be here tonight and, and participate in this video. So the 2018 men's soccer team really saw success that CLC hasn't seen in many years. And uh, overall, we finished with a 7-7-3 and three record. Uh, so you can tell there's th three ties there that really could have gone other way. All three ties were double overtime games uh, where we had to end the match after two full double overtimes, a lot of soccer play, and we ultimately ended in a draw. So to offer some perspective on the success of this season, this team had as many wins as the last five years or the last five teams combined uh, in the Skyway Conference. It's just an incredible statistic when you think about uh, where the pro program started and where it's become this year and, and the job that uh, Coach Gentry and, and his student athletes have done to elevate the program competitively. Um, since 2011, this is the best conference record we've had and certainly the uh, first winning season or above 500 record we've had in many years uh, dating back in our history. This year, the team has uh, from the fall 2017 season to the fall 2018, se fall 2018 season, our men's soccer team has improved their team GPA by almost a full grade point. Uh, which is just an incredible accomplishment to do in one year. Um, I think it's a testament to uh, the type of culture that Coach Gentry and, and the staff have put in. Um, but most importantly, I think it's a big testament to our student athletes to, to buying into what's really important and, and putting their time and energy in the, in the right places. Uh, so we're extremely, extremely proud of their performance in the classroom, uh, which is carried over onto the field as well.
As an observer, one of the big things I'm proud of uh, watching this men's soccer team compete is uh, how hard um, and, and uh, the teamwork they have and discipline and, and their approach to competing and competing really tough. Um, but at the same time, being good sports and uh, playing it the right way and with integrity and sportsmanship and, and all that. Um, I think that unfortunately that's been really unique in our conference and region. Um, but I can honestly tell you uh, from observing everything that CLC, uh, if there was a sportsmanship award out there, we would win it. Um, and that's not to say that we're soft or, or don't play hard or, or don't, comp don't compete. We give everything we got, um, but we, we compete the right way. So I'm really proud of this team. I think the 2019 season is looking very bright, both academically and athletically. Uh, we've got eight sophomores on the team this year uh, that have done a tremendous job of changing the culture of the program and the trajectory of the program uh, with, you know, with Coach Gentry's leadership and, and all that. Um, but they really did all the heavy lifting uh, for changing how this program is going to evolve and the things it's going to accomplish in the future. We're very optimistic about that uh, until all the freshmen um, that did all the right things this year um, and prepared yourself uh, getting through your freshman season. Um, I know you guys are going to do a fantastic job as, as sophomores, uh, both academically and athletically, and to bring along our new incoming freshmen uh, to do even better next year. And that's the expectation, and I am pretty confident that we're going to accomplish that both in the academics and athletic side of things. Um, so I just want to say congratulations to the 2018 Lancer men's soccer team. Uh, it's been a pleasure and the best of luck to you. They're moving on and for the for the freshmen coming back, uh, we can't get, wait to keep working with you. You know, a bit of a roller coaster, it started slow, picked up a lot of steam and then kind of slowed down at the end there, but it uh, just leave us, uh, leave us, left us with a lot to look forward to in the fall. You know, just uh, just them enjoying each other's company and getting up in the middle of a restaurant and dancing. And I think that was the game where where we actually lost five to four to uh, to Elmhurst or girls who tried their best. And when, you know, we got, by the time we got some food, um, they forgot about the the result of the game and just were enjoying each other's company. And for the most part of the season, that was that was the norm. I thought that. Even though I knew throughout the season we were we were pretty good, uh, it was when we would compete against the top teams in our region, especially the top two teams in our region, that really kind of uh, surprised me. Not a lot, but a, a little bit that we were able to handle the pressure. But uh, it was good to see, especially for the future, uh, where, we're, where we're at. There's a number of things. Academics are, are still very important. Creating a schedule and sticking to it, getting the practice on time, and, and I think the team knows what they need to do for the future, uh, soccer-wise. Um, the as much training as we can as we can squeeze in, uh, you know, along with all the other things they have going on there in their lives, it takes a lot of dedication to uh, be able to set accomplishments or set goals for yourself and be able to accomplish them uh, one by one. Meeting people has been my favorite thing. Actually, reminds me of one of the stories. One of our away games, we, you know, we played a game where we were trying to. Uh, everybody had to write kind of a paragraph or a story about themselves, and then we, I read them all, and the, the team had to guess which story uh, belonged to them. So, just a, you know, a great way to kind of break the ice and get to know each other. Um, it's just another great memory from the season. But I think that's what I've enjoyed. In my in my first year, is just getting to know all these all these new people, um, a couple of people that I'll you know continue to know and uh, be able to help them, and they can help me and learn from each other and, uh, for a long time. A lot of fun for me in my first year, uh, getting to know everybody and, and, and just seeing you know what we'd be able to do um, in this uh, in this region. Um, We've had uh, I've had players that have have come with me to watch recruits. I've had players meet recruits here at CLC. So I really think uh, we have a team that is is really itching to uh, 
to have success next fall and start a new tradition of CLC being the best soccer women's soccer program. Um, the characters really truly revealed from this team and they battled and got better and better and we won some some big games and we're right in uh, some a lot of other close ones uh, and finished right in the middle of the conference which we may have never thought was possible early on which is a testament to our ladies. We had many ladies playing out of position and some were asked to do things that they've never done before on the softball field. Uh, so I can make a really long list of uh, ladies that never pitched before and embraced that role and went out there as challenging as it was or whatever position it may be. I think we got continually reminded uh, about great sports moments. I uh, was continually inspired by them and I know Coach Cox feels the same. They, the team could have approached the season a lot differently than they did. Um, thankfully, they didn't. They chose the right path, and uh, they played hard. They competed, you know, and we, we, we did a lot better than we ever thought we would have. And, um, you know, that's definitely helped us in recruiting and just the experience uh, that these young ladies have had and how they approached their work and had fun with it, most importantly, because um, it's really to give up and, and uh, you know, Feel sorry for yourself, but this team didn't do that. Um, so I think that uh, anybody coach that you're talking about that's building a program, they're going to tell you about culture first and foremost. And I think we established a very good culture this year. It's obviously very bright. And uh, I think when you go through life, uh, you're dealt with a lot of adversity and, and how you respond is really going to truly reveal your character. And, and they experienced that this year. And many, many moments we had opportunities for character, good or bad, to reveal itself. And I'm proud to say um, that the good far outweighed the bad. And uh, these ladies, I'd go to battle with them any day of the week. Um, and they've got very, very bright futures ahead of them, whatever path they choose. What I love about CLC and, and our athletics programs is, is the opportunities that we give to our students. Um, you know, we're unique uh, in a lot of ways, and we give anybody that wants an opportunity can come study here and be a student. And we give um, students that may have never had an opportunity to compete at the collegiate level um, an opportunity to do that here as well. Um, I, I'm really I'm motivated personally by our students. Um, I love working with them, especially this softball team. Um, I know that Coach Cox uh, deserves a lot of credit this year um, as our assistant coach, but uh, he he really elevated as, as our top softball uh, mind and coach third base for us. And um, I know our, our ladies really respect John. He's not a man of many words, um, but his actions speak for themselves. And he is uh, one of the most caring and genuine people I've been around. So we were very lucky, lucky to have him as a part of our program. And for him to, just like our young ladies had to do, embrace a new role, expanded role uh, with our team and uh, never quit on your, our young ladies, never quit on the program. And he's been with us for 20 plus years and is just as passionate, if not more, uh, than he was on day one. So um, aside from my things, I think John deserves a lot of credit and uh, we can't thank him enough for his service to our team and athletes. This year's men's tennis season had a great ending in the fact that we qualified for the national tournament by finishing second in the NCAA and NJCAA uh, Division I regional tournament, we finished second. The first place team was Prairie State. Uh, they've got an outstanding team that they won going away, but we prevailed by being second and uh, second best play team in the region. And very proud of that. The kids worked very hard and did a great job. We had only two veterans who provided lots of veteran leadership, but we had mostly newcomers. And uh, that means that they were going through this process for the first time and uh, they responded well. And uh, obviously at the end came up really on top by finishing second in regional. 
Well, no doubt the uh, the highlight was uh, finishing second at Regions. Rules, there were some great matches. Our number one doubles team uh, won in a match tie break in their semifinals, and that was a great victory for them. Uh, having Gnor Verdi uh, come in and play number six singles and number three doubles for us and winning uh, uh, three out of five matches was outstanding. Uh, did a great job. Well, I think that the uh, this year's group continue to set high standards. This is uh, fortunately the third year in a row that the men have qualified their team for the nationals and they've set that as a standard that I think uh, they want other teams to, to try to live up to. So they've uh, done a good job. Well, I think one of the things we try to emphasize is how important academics are. And so hopefully they're all going to do academically well here at College of Lake County if they're going to earn a degree and go on to a four-year university. Uh, hopefully a lot of them will continue on to play tennis and, and do well with that. So I think the future for all these players is bright, both academically and tennis-wise. Well, men's team this year uh, worked hard. Uh, they came in in the fall uh, practicing with the women who were in their competitive season. They continued to work hard in the fall. They worked hard in the winter. Uh, they improved. They got better. And... Uh, I think that they showed how good they can be. They uh, did a great job in our dual meet season, only losing two matches, but then they came back and finished in the top two in the regional and, and showed that they could really pull together at the end and play their very best tennis at the end, and they did that. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that they did that. Well, women had an outstanding season this fall. They were regional champions, obviously a great accomplishment. Uh, we did lose uh, a dual meet uh, in, the, in the fall, so we weren't undefeated. And unfortunately, weren't conference champions this year, but uh, they did win regionals, and so therefore they qualified their whole team for the national tournament down in Texas this spring. Uh, our women's team uh, was unique in a couple aspects. Uh, one was the additional of, addition of an assistant coach uh, this year. Uh, Betsy Pogginsy did a great job, uh, coached our players in the last match of the regional and helped us uh, win that regional championship. It was great having Betsy on board. It was also unique in that we had uh, three veteran sophomore players. Shauna Henderson did a great job at number one singles, uh, Sydney at number two singles, and Gabby Diaz at number three. Those returning players uh, were great. We had uh, four incoming freshmen come in who can made great contributions to our team. Uh, Gabby Palm at number four singles, uh, Grace Marino at number five singles, Keely Mulcahy at number six singles, and Andrea Morales, who came in and joined as was an outstanding seventh player for us this year. So those incoming freshmen not only contributed a great deal this year, but I'm confident are gonna be a, a big part of our team next year as sophomores. No doubt one of them, uh, obviously, was the fact that we won the team as a region, uh, as regional champions. It came down to the last match of the, of the regional, and uh, we won it in a very heroic close match. Uh, 11 to 9 in the, in the tiebreaker to move a half point ahead of, uh, of, of Wabanzi. And that was a great excitement and, and great part of the year. Hopefully our outgoing seniors have set a, a standard of play that uh, by Shauna winning the regional and, and singles two years in a row and Sydney qualifying for the nationals two years in a row and Gabby helped leading the team to the regional championship. Her, our two Gabbies, uh, Gabby Diaz and Gabby Palm, the clinching match to, to uh, have us win first place in regionals. Hopefully those strong traditions of hard work and effort are gonna be something that'll stick with the program for years to come. One of the challenges of a sport like tennis, it's, it's somewhat of an individual sport that you compete as an individual or two players in doubles. But when a group of young women, in this case, or young men come together and they all work hard and they all make a supreme effort, then as a team, they're going to have success. And, and this year's team uh, required everyone to perform well in the regional tournament. Uh, you couldn't just take one player or two players. Every player made great contributions. And this year's team, I think that was certainly the case. We feel the, the girls played really hard all season, very competitive. And uh, some of the things we always talked about was that um, there's only certain things you can control is that we can control our attitude of being positive, uh, giving out effort, uh, hustle, always being competitive, and being what we call teamness, being together as a team all the time. And I think we really were success, successful at doing that this season.
Uh, the main thing, this was the first year, I think, that we ever had a team without a true setter. So what we did was we actually had two girls volunteer to step up to fill the role. And they took on that role and due to their hard work and their dedication to fulfilling that role, uh, I think they did a great job in helping our team be successful. We were playing Trinity University, four-year school. We uh, had lost the first set and our uh, the sports announcer, uh, Kent Korth, all of a sudden started playing a Neil Diamond song, Sweet Caroline. And the girls just started busting out during the changeover, going into our third set, singing and just having a blast singing the song. And it, I think what it did, it showed their bondness or their teamness, togetherness. Uh, some of the things are the uh, coaching staff. Love working with the other coaches, uh, the staff here uh, from Nick, Heath, uh, uh, Cindy, all the personnel here that are in, the, in the PE center. Um, they're always uh, trying to help us out in any way they can. They, um, there's always the continual progress of um, upgrading facilities, making everything, the programs better for all the sports. The other thing is that um, the players themselves, we love coaching. We want to see these kids succeed, not only on the court, but in the classroom. We want them to have fun also. We want them to compete as hard as they can. But if they're enjoying the experience too, I think that's been great. And I think that's what we're trying to bring out for them. Just again, I think this team was uh, a great team to coach. I think they, they did bond well, not only on the court, but outside. I think they've become better and better friends. Uh, I really think they're going to do well in their futures. If they continue playing volleyball, I think they're going to do well. If they decide just to focus on their studies and do it into their careers, I think all of them are, have a, a mindset that they're going to you know, focus on what they want to do and, and really go for their goals. So I think it's, uh, it's been a good group. Well, as you can see, uh, Richard Ray, our student worker, videographer, is an extremely, extremely talented and dedicated individual, so we really need to give him a round of applause. We see Richard up all the time, but I still can't comprehend how much time he has to spend behind the scenes uh, editing and doing all that stuff. So thank, thank you so much, Richard. You did great tribute to our student athletes. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, we have a lot of awards to hand out tonight. Before we do that, I'd like to explain what the awards actually mean. I think sometimes that gets missed, or at least the gravity of the awards get missed. Uh, an all-conference award refers to the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference, for which we are a member. The coaches from all the Skyway institutions gather for each sport. They nominate players, they vote on players, and then that's how you get the top players in the region. The highest honor is your first team all-conference honorees. The uh, second highest honors are your second team all-conference honorees. And then those that are nominated or mentioned are honorable mention. So you may have gotten votes or were talked about, and hence you receive honorable mention by your peers in the Skyway Conference. So by, the, by virtue of uh, the other colleges in our conference voting on these, it's, it really is a high honor in my, in my opinion. When we talk about all region, the NJCA, which we are a member, there's over 500 member institutions. They're divided into 24 regions. CLC is a region four member, along with 29 other colleges. You can see the little region four in Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. To be all region, it's the same process. We re meet as a region, we nominate, we vote, or when I say we, the coaches, and then there's your all region teams, first, second, honorable mention, and so forth. Uh, so it's a bigger pool of schools and an even higher honor. So as we also have some team awards we'll be handing out tonight. They're like team MVPs, most approved, team captain awards. Uh, those are selected by our coaches. They all have different methodologies for doing that. Uh, we'll be handing those out here as well. To move forward, uh, when we hand out these awards at this time, uh, I'd like to call our baseball team as I not the entire baseball team. I'll read off some baseball players, and you can line up at this uh, staircase to my left, and in the order that I read off, and then we'll call you up on stage and uh, award your, announce your award. 
So we'll start with Danny Yates, Jake Harmon, Jackson Spiegelberg, Kyle Waller, Michael McBriar, Ryan Brouch, Stephen Moggett, Tony Kruger, that's it. So first off, Danny Yates. Danny was an honorable mention all-conference, and he also received the, the uh, CLC Lancer Pitching Award for the top pitcher on the team. Jake Harmon was first team all-conference, and he also received the hitting award as the top hitting or top batting average on the team. Jackson Spiegelberg, first team all-conference. Kyle Waller, honorable mention all-conference. Michael McBriar, second team all-conference. Brian Rouch, second team all-conference. And the Lancer, most improved player of the season. Stephen Moggett, honorable mention, all-conference. And Tony Kruger, honorable mention, all-conference, and the team most valuable player. Next, I'd like to call up for men's basketball, Elijah Witchers, Javon Taylor, and Malcolm Reed, if you're here. I don't believe he's here today. Elijah and Javon, get up here. Elijah's right here, walking up. Elijah was honorable mention all conference. He was NJCA Region 4, second team all region. He was also voted the team most valuable player. <laughs> Javon Taylor was honorable mention all conference and was named the team's most improved player. <laughs> Cross country. Cameron Detweiler, is he here? I don't believe he is. Jeremy here, Jeremy Wallace. Michael Harlan, saw him. Come on up, Michael. Michael was first team all conference and first team all region. Jeremy is here. Jeremy Wallace was an Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference runner of the year, meaning he was an individual overall champion for the Skyway Conference. He was an NJC Region 4 individual runner up. He was the team most valuable player as well. Okay, so men's golf. I was going to have Coach Colleen help me hand out men's golf awards because Coach Wanowski isn't here, but then neither is his team because they're nationals right now. So that was a. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Anywho, I will mention uh, for the sake of honoring those individuals since they've had a fantastic season, Carl Tarola was first team all conference, first team all region, and he was the most valuable player. Connor Kinema. He was the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference Player of the Year, the overall individual medalist over the entire conference schedule. And he was uh, third team all region as well. And then Trevor Britton was first team all conference and first team all region. So 
Let's give him a thought. The last update I heard was the adult team was sitting somewhere around 17th place at Nationals so far. So uh, hopefully they keep it up. Men's soccer. Aaron Castellanos, Castellanos Canoa, is he here? Antonio Vasquez, come on up. Danny Pajardo, Danny here. Greg Madrov, Leo Orozco, no Leo had a lead for prior game. So we'll start with Antonio Vasquez, first team all conference, first team all region, and the team's most valuable player. Greg Madurov was the team's most valuable lancer. I will honor men's tennis. Will you bring up Adam Hagman, Brian Ceramic, Gernor Beardy, and Ken Herman? Mike Sims and Oliver Galejo. Starting off with Adam Hagman, who's finished second team all region, and he was the team's most improved player. Brian Sremick, second team all region, and second team all region in doubles as well, single man doubles. Gnor Beardy, second team all region, number three doubles, and the team captain. Ken Herman, second team all region in doubles. Mike Sims, second team all region doubles and the team's most valuable player. Last but not least, Oliver Galejo, team captain. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Coach Cox, can you come up here and help me with softball? All right, ladies. Alex, uh, Alexi, Jillian Foote, and Carly Rotono. Come on up, please. First off, with Lexi Davis, she won the team's most approved award. Jill Foote was first team all conference, first team all region, and the team's most valuable player and also a captain. Rotuno, second team all conference and team captain. Volleyball. Angie Tuchel, Bailey Turk, and Sydney Polich. Please come on up.
Melanie's on her way up here. We'll go ahead and mention that she is second team all conference. She was on the NJC Region 4 All Tournament team, and she was the Lancers' most valuable player. Bailey Turk could not join us tonight, but she was the most improved player. And then last but not least, Sydney Polich voted honorable mention all conference. Women's basketball. Hannah Raubaugh, I know she couldn't join us tonight. She's in Germany. Uh, Shay Erickson, come on up, please. Shay received the team's most improved player award. Women's cross country, Jacqueline Bettencourt and Jennifer Ray and Sophia Martinez. <laughs> Jackie Bettencourt is first team all conference and was the team's most valuable player. Sophia Martinez is first team all conference. And Jennifer Ray was the team's most improved player. There is one individual that is not on the women's team, but on the men's team that I neglected to mention was the most improved player, and that was Jordan Mandola. Sorry, Jordan. He was faster this fall. <laughs> Women's soccer. Angelica Marula, Elizabeth Tovar, Leoli Gonzalez, Morgan Kiefer, Rachel DeNovo, Rachel Moore. Come on up, please. Starting off with Angelica Marula. She was uh, voted second team all conference. Elizabeth Tovar, honorable mention all conference. Leoli Gonzalez, the team's most improved player. Morgan Kiefer. Honorable mention, all conference. Rachel DeNovo, second team, all region. And Rachel Moore. Rachel was the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference Player of the Year. She was first team, all region, was an all American nominee. My opinion was slighted from the all American award. Um, but we will talk about that now. And was the team's most valuable player. <laughs> Women's tennis. Gabby Diaz, Gabby Palm, Grace Marino. Come on up, please. Yeah, the idea is on front. She was first team all conference, first team all region, and first team all region in doubles as well, singles and doubles. <laughs> Gabby Palm was first team all region in singles and first team all region in doubles. Grace Marino was the team's most improved player. I'm 
I'm sorry, you're right. Shauna Henderson, City B Shake, you definitely need to come up here too. You know, I saw Coach Love on the list next, and I figured, assumed that was the end of the list because while we're talking about it and they're on the way up here, Coach Love was the Region 4 Coach of the Year because they're a Region 4 champion. And let's not discount the achievements of these two ladies. Uh, we played number one and number two singles, and we're also doubles partners as well. I have spent a couple trips at nationals. Uh, Shauna Henderson was the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference Player of the Year. She was the NJCA Region 4 Player of the Year. And she was second team all region in doubles as well, and was voted the team's most valuable player. Sydney Mishek, second team all region in doubles, and is the team's captain. So that concludes our athletic awards. One more round of applause for all of us. So as we get into academic awards, um, the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference has an academic team every year. The first award is the Academic All-Conference Freshman Award. This is awarded to all first-year student athletes who have earned at least 20, 24 credit hours and a minimum GPA of 3.0, cumulative GPA. The second award is the Academic All-Conference Sophomore Award. This is awarded to all second-year student athletes that have earned at least 48 credit hours and a minimum of a 3.0 GPA. Lastly, the Dick Duran Award is the highest academic honor in the Skyway Conference. This goes to the male and female student athlete with the highest GPA in the conference. I'm not sure, I'm sorry, we're having a technical difficulty, but I can still get through what I need to here. Uh, the Dick Duran is the highest academic award in the Skyway Conference. It goes to the male and female student athlete with the highest GPA among all student athletes in the entire conference of all institutions. So it's only awarded to theoretically two people every year in the entire conference. Um, I am pleased to announce that I know for sure we have one honoree because it's a perfect 4.0 GPA, which we'll get to in a minute, and we have a really good case for uh, number two honoree, which it would be great to sweep that award in the conference. Uh, as we did before, we'll hand out the academic awards by sport. So I'll call out your names and you come up and line up just as we did, and we'll hand out our academic awards. Baseball, Anthony Donahue, Anthony Kruger, Jake Carmen, James Callahan, Jackson Spiegelberg, Lucas Vandeslunt, Michael McBriar, Nicholas uh, Asklewitz, Pascal Delipas, Ryan Brouch, Scott Stitz, and Thomas Regali. Come on up. <laughs> Anthony Donahue got the uh, All Academic Freshman Award. Tony Kruger, Academic All Conference freshman. Jake Harmon, Academic All Conference freshman. Uh, James, Jimmy Callahan couldn't be here, I believe, if I'm correct, but he was a sophomore academic honoree. Jackson Spiegelberg, Academic All Conference freshman. Lucas Vandeslund, Academic All-Conference freshman. Michael McBriar, Academic All-Conference freshman. Nicholas Askowitz, Academic All-Conference freshman. Pascal De La Felipez, Academic All-Conference freshman. Ryan Brouch, Academic All-Conference freshman. 
Scott Stetz, Academic All Conference, freshman. And Thomas Legale, Academic All Conference, freshman. A fun fact before we move on to men's basketball is uh, this year. We had more academic all-conference honorees, as you realize the baseball list was already very long. We've still got a long one to go. Uh, but this is the most academic all-conference honorees we've had, you know, at least the last seven years, and that's the furthest I could dig back on data. So uh, this is an unprecedented year for us in academic all-conference honorees. <laughs> Men's basketball, Aaron Williams, <laughs> Elijah Witchers, Imaji Bristol martin Martin. Javon Taylor and Trevor Bowman. Aaron Williams, Academic All Conference freshman. Elijah Witchers, Academic All Conference freshman. One more on Elijah. Elijah finishes two years, uh, meets the requirements for the Dick Durant Award honoree with a perfect 4.0 GPA, so I'm confident telling you that he will be a Dick Durant honoree at our President's Banquet this summer. <laughs> Imache Christo Mon, Academic Law Conference, freshman. Javon Taylor. Academic Hall Conference, freshman. She's proud of you. And Trevor Bowman, looks like you couldn't make it here tonight, but he was an Academic Hall Conference as a freshman as well. Men's Cross Country, Brandon Costa and Jordan Mandola. Brian was not able to make it tonight with uh, Jordan Mandolo's first team academic all conference freshman. And, uh, Brian is receiving the sophomore award. Congratulations, Brian, as well. Men's call. As we know, they're not here with us tonight. Connor Kinnemuntz was academic all conference freshman. And uh, Timothy Lukowski was also academic all conference. Men's soccer. Andres Fuentes, Daniel Pajardo, Greg Majorov, Kyle Swanson, Logan Gallagher, Varshi and Arun Kumar, Andres Fuentes with the Academic All Conference sophomore. Oh, it's like Danny Pizarro was not able to make it, but Greg Madrow, and he was an academic all conference as a sophomore. And Greg Madrow is an academic all conference freshman. Kyle Swanson, Logan Gallagher, and Varshi Arun Kumar both got the academic all conference for freshman as well. Men's tennis. Adam Hackman, oh. Andre Becklowitz, Gwenor Beardy, Ken Herman, Oliver Galejo. First off, Adam Hackman, Academic All Conference freshman. Andre Becklowitz was not able to attend tonight, but he was Academic All Conference freshman. Benor Beardy, what? Academic All Conference for sophomore. Ken mm -hmm. Herman, the freshman award. <laughs> Oliver Galejo, sophomore. Mm -hmm. Softball, Jill Foots and Carly Rotono.
both Julian Foote and Carla Rotono were academic all conferences sophomores. Volleyball, Madison Correccio and Sydney Polish. Madison was academic all conference as a sophomore. Sydney Polish, academic all conference as a sophomore. Camille Cuevas, I'm sorry, we're going on with this basketball. Camille Cuevas, uh, Hannah Rampal is not able to be here tonight. Alex Ballinger, she's on the basketball list even though she played softball as well. She's, she... Camille Cuevas was academic all conference as a freshman. <laughs> Hannah Rampal was an academic all conference as a sophomore. And Alex Ballinger was academics all conference for fresh as a freshman in both basketball and softball. Women's cross country: Jacqueline Bentoncourt and Sophia Martinez. Both Jackie and Sophia were academic all conference as sophomores. Women's soccer, Angelica Marugla, Cynthia Tellez, Rachel DeNovo, Dahlia Vera, Gabrielle, oh, I'm sorry, that's, that's it. Dahlia Vera is the last one for women's soccer. Angelica Marugla was first team all or academic all conference as a sophomore. Cynthia Tellez, academic all conference as a freshman. And Rachel DeNovo, freshman. <laughs> Kelly Bear is not here. Last but not least, women's tennis. Gabby Palm, Grace Marino, Keely Mulcahy, Shauna Henderson, and Sydney Bishek. <laughs> Gabby Palm was Academic All Conference for freshmen. Grace Marino, freshman. Keely Mulcahy, freshman. Shauna Henderson is Academic All Conference as a sophomore. She will also be our Dick Durant uh, Award nominee. She barely edged out Sidney Mishek, who was also a sophomore academic honoree by five hundredths of a point, I think was what it was. So uh, I know they're very competitive on the tennis courts, and they are in the classroom as well. So come on up here. Okay, the final segment of this evening's program, we're gonna have to figure out some technical issues here uh, before we get too far, but uh, we're gonna, it's certainly not the last the least thing, but we're gonna do the 2019 CLT Athletics Hall of Fame induction. Lancers Athletics has a rich tradition of success in its history. You can normally see in our championship banners on the bleachers behind me. The CLC launches its 50th anniversary as an institution, it's only fitting that we induct these three deserving individuals that were a major part of hanging these championship banners on our walls and writing a big part of our history. Aside from the tremendous athletic accomplishments, these three CLC alumni have one thing in common, they love CLC, and they are proud to have this part of their story. To them, we are truly the college that launches champions, a phrase that I stole from Dr. Suttick. Um, 
and it's appropriately coined for CLC. So we've got some, for our first inductee, we, we need to use the projector screen here. So if you give us a moment, we're gonna try and troubleshoot this real quick. This evening is Corey Donnell. Corey's a Lake Villa native, graduated from Carmel High School in 1997. He was recruited by Gene Hansen in the summer of 97 while playing for the Monday Night Legion as a pitcher. In two years at CLC, Donald Master over 35 appearances on the mound, including a sophomore campaign where he was 8-2 and two with eight saves. After CLC, Corey received a scholarship to play baseball at NCAA Division I Western Illinois University. After his playing career ended, he returned to CLC to begin his coaching career. He assisted Coach Hanson for three seasons to be taken over as the head coach at, in 2004. After his coaching stint at CLC, Corey returned to NCAA Division I as a recruiting coordinator and pitching coach at the University of Maine. In 2008, Domino began his professional career as a pitching coach with a position that he currently still holds today. As a professional coach, Domino's teams have won over, have over 700 wins competing in the playoffs six times and winning two league championships. He was given the opportunity to coach in five professional all-star games, and he also has stints as a pitching coach for the Vermont Mountaineers of the New England Collegiate Baseball League, Anchorage Glacier Pilots of the Alaskan Baseball League, and the Magellan Venados in the Liga Mexico Pacifico, uh, which is uh, kind of the equivalent of the Mexico L MLB. Currently, Corey is the bullpen coach for the Chicago Dogs in the American Association of Independent Professional Baseball. Please join me in congratulating Corey Donald in his induction of the CLC Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2019. Unfortunately, his role has been traveling, and he's not able to join us tonight, but accepting on his behalf is his brother, Trent Donald. Uh, and fortunately, Corey uh, had a videographer record a message for us, uh, so you can hear directly from Corey as well. We'll watch that now. It is truly an honor being inducted in the College of Lake County Hall of Fame. So many athletes have put on a uniform for the Lancers. CLC has been a starting point for me at so many points in my career, not only as a player, but as a coach. Coming out of high school, I was undecided and unrecruited primarily. I was playing Wonderline Legion when Coach Hansen was recruiting another player. As the story goes, my mom says I was having one of my better games and Coach Hansen was looking around asking people who I was in the stands. My mom said proudly, he is my son. Within a couple days, Coach Hansen was in a meeting with me at my house saying the benefits of College of Lake County, the benefits of his program, and how he can really help me turn into a player, but also an athlete. I wasn't a Division I athlete or a Division I student coming out of high school. CLC turned me into both of them. I'm proud to say I'm a CLC alumni and now in the Hall of Fame. After my playing career at College of Lake County, I graduated from West Illinois where I also played baseball. After college, I returned to be Gene's assistant for three years. I eventually took over from him as a head coach for one year before moving on to University of Maine. The last 13 years I spent in professional baseball. Currently I'm the pitching coach for Chicago Dogs. Without CLC, without that opportunity, I don't think any of this was possible. I truly thank everybody involved from the administration, Coach Hansen, my parents, and every, all my teammates. It is truly an honor to be inducted in the CLC Hall of Fame. Thank you and go Lancers. All right, our second inductee of the evening is Derek Hart. I'm, I'm hearing some love of the retro photo here. Derek Hart from Round Lake High School was a starting pitcher for the CLC baseball team in 1993 and the 1994 seasons. In high school, Derek had a 12-0 record as a starting pitcher, a record that he still holds, still owns to this day. He was voted the team captain and most valuable player and was voted the Northwest Suburban Conference Player of the Year. He was inducted to the Round Lake High School Hall of Fame in 2011. For the Lancers, Derek finished with a 94 record as a starting pitcher with an impressive 72 record in his sophomore season, leading the Lancers to win back-to-back -back Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference titles. He was named the All-Conference Team, was second-team All-State, and he was an Illinois Juco All-Star. 
Following his time at CLC, Derek earned a scholarship to play baseball at Lewis University. At Lewis, he finished with an 11-4 record as a starting pitcher and was a Great Lakes Valley Conference first team selection, which is a very prestigious honor. After his accomplished career as a student athlete, Derek signed a minor league contract with the Richmond Roosters, as you can see his card right here, of the Frontier League. We played three full, he played three full years of professional baseball and ended his career with eight wins as a starting pitcher. He once held the record for the most strikeouts in a game with 15, and he was named the Frontier Pitcher of the Week on two different occasions. Please join me in congratulating Derek Hart in his induction to the CLC Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2019. County Athletic Department and whoever else was gracious enough to vote for me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. There are many names on that wall that I've either played with or watched play, or, or played with and watched play in my career. One of the names is Tim Monroe. Tim Monroe was five years older than me, but we both had the same path. We attended Round Lake High School, then came here to CLC, then went on to Lewis University. Then he decided to be a Major League Baseball player. I was lucky enough to be the sixth player in our school history. Tim was second, and now this is stop number two. I want to especially thank my two head coaches, Gene Hansen, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, Gene Hansen, uh, uh, also a Hall of Famer, and my head coach here at CLC. I still remember the day when Gene came to my house and offered me a scholarship to play at CLC. Days like that, you'll never forget. Playing for Gene was amazing. He was one of those coaches who first taught me about drive. Drive is normally something you cannot teach, but some coaches give you that extra pep to capture drive and push you forward. To me, personally, that was Gene. After CLC, I went on to Lewis University and played for the late, great Irish O'Reilly, another Hall of Fame coach. Going from JUCO to one of the best D2 schools in the area was quite a step, but I knew with drive it would help me get through it. I had a very good career at Lewis and won many awards, but at Lewis, I found myself wondering, am I good enough for the next step? During draft week of the 1996 Major League season, I was hoping to get drafted in a late round. Unfortunately, that call did not come, but days later, I got a call from Irish to let me know that I will be receiving a call from the Frontier League. The Frontier League was a professional minor league system for independent teams. Once I received that call, I teared up pretty good. Because I knew I had made it, I made it to professional baseball. <sighs> drive, drive is what got me there. I finished my three-year career with eight wins and hundreds of memories. There was no bigger rush than pitching in front of thousands of people, whether it was my hometown of Richmond, Indiana, or all the way to Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I want to thank everybody who's been a part of my baseball career. First, I want to thank my mom and dad. They would bring me to all my practices and all my games growing up as a kid. My parents came to everything, whether it was at CLC or all the way up at Lewis. They also came to as many minor league games as they possibly could. When I was, uh, I also want to thank my brother. When I was younger, I used to watch him play all the time. And being a younger brother, of course, I wanted to be better. I want to thank my wife. Jen and my kids, Katie and Addison, I'm so blessed to have such a great family. Though you guys were never able to see me play for obvious reasons, you know how much baseball means to me. I am beyond excited for all of us to share this moment tonight together. I'd also like to thank my CLC teammates. We had a hell of a run with playing for Gene for those two years. Players like Dan Strong, Kurt Brush, Bob Olson, Brian Garrity, and your current head coach, Steve Cummings. And lastly, a word to my Lake County Lightning team, 14U. Baseball is the best sport in the world. And with drive, someday I hope 
to sit in a room like this and see your name be put upon a wall forever. Thank you, College Lake County Athletic Department, for adding my name to such a great, prestigious group of men for over the last 40 years. It's truly an honor. Thank you. Our final inductee of the evening is Chris Hoffman. Chris Hoffman, a 2012 Lace Community High School graduate, played baseball for Coach Heath Cummings and Lancers in the 2013-14 season. He had a 439 batting average for the season, 11 doubles, eight triples, 42 stolen bases, which was a ranked second in the NBCA. He was named the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference Player of the Year and led the Lancers to a 2014 Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference Championship. Most notably, he was named an NJCA First Team All-American. After CLC, Chris received a scholarship to play baseball at Missouri Southern State University. He made an immediate impact in his first season there with a, with a 426 batting average, 83 hits, 56 runs, 16 doubles, three triples, eight home runs, 39 RBIs, and 129 stolen bases. That's a mouthful in, in a great year. Chris continued to be one of the most versatile players in the country during his career at Missouri Southern State. In addition to being offensive power, he, had elite, he was an elite base runner, tremendous field player, and pitcher, throwing more than 40 innings throughout his career. Chris earned all conference honors, was a semifinalist for the Tino Martinez D2 Player of the Year, and was an NCAA Division II third team All-American. Please join me in congratulating Chris Hoffman in his induction to CLC Athletics Hall of Fame, Class of 2019. Nick has the honor to go last, so I'll make it short here. I'd like to start off by saying this is a great honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame tonight. I'd like to thank my parents for always being there and supporting me. I want to thank Coach Cummings for giving me the opportunity to receive an education and play at the next level. I'd also like to thank Coach Murph, Coach B, and Coach Farrell for, for always being there for me. I can't emphasize enough how much impact these coaches have had on me. I learned so much about the game of baseball and it, and it helped me tremendously with my play on the field. I wouldn't have been the player without these guys, so thank you. I'd like to close tonight with a short story. I'm not sure if Coach Cummings remembers this or not, but uh, when I initially committed to CLC, uh, my coaches at my high school were asking me where I was gonna go. We were on a trip back from a game and I said, uh, I think I'm gonna go to CLC. And he's, my coach said to me, have you told Coach Cummings yet? And uh, I had not, so he's like, why don't you give him a call right now? So I gave him a call. I think he was a little surprised to hear from me because when I uh, told him that I was coming here, I think he yelled into the phone, very excited. So Coach, I hope I didn't surprise you too much, but uh, I couldn't be happier with the choice I made to be a Lancer. Thank you. I think for all of our current student athletes, I think you can see how much this place means to these gentlemen that are up here tonight and uh, how important these memories are going to live with you forever as you go on through life. You may not realize it now, but it's, it's the truth. Um, I can't tell you how proud I am to stand up tonight with you all and celebrate the season. Um, to our sophomores, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. And to our freshmen, I hope you leave this uh, with motivation to become the best version of yourself next year and beyond with us uh, as part of the Lancer family. 
So this concludes our banquet. I congratulate our student athletes, our teams, our coaches, and uh, definitely our Hall of Fame inductees. And I wish you all a blessed and safe evening. Thank you.